Kyra and welcome back to my channel. So as you all see I have a special guest with me today and as you all can tell by the title of the video today's video is going to be all about my labor, delivery, and postpartum experience. Let's see first of all update we had the baby. <laughs> I am no longer pregnant and we did have a healthy and beautiful baby girl named Olivia Lynn. So let's kind of go go back to I'll start because okay so I'm gonna so she was born on October 13th at 3 10 a.m but I'm gonna take it back to October 11th that's kind of where the whole labor story kind of start so as you guys know I had gestational diabetes throughout my pregnancy and so because of the GD I was actually scheduled to get induced on the 16th on the 16th yes on October 16th so I was scheduled to get no 14th not the 16th the, <laughs> see oh, this the is baby why due date was the 16th. yeah so her okay so yeah so oh, yeah, olivia's 14th, due date 13th. was right. the 16th i was scheduled to get induced on the 14th and the reason why is because since i had gestational diabetes both my doctor and us we really thought that it would be best for um, me to not go past 40 weeks the longer that she would have been in the wound past 40 weeks the more at risk she would become obviously it was ultimately up to us but we kind of agreed that we thought it would be best for us to go ahead and have the scheduled induction just in case she didn't come before then um so that way i wouldn't go past 40 weeks so again i was scheduled to get induced on the 14th but i was very determined to get my ba my baby to get my body to go into labor naturally before then i had a doctor's appointment um or appointment to like do the registration paperwork what really pushed me into high gear was when i went to the appointment and the the lady told me that although i was scheduled to get induced on the 14th we would have had to check in to the hospital on the 13th so i would have had to check into the hospital the e wednesday evening even though i wasn't technically getting induced until thursday thursday morning um and when, the minute I checked in, that was it in terms of food. I would not have been able to eat anything. And when she said that, I was like, okay, I'm going to pick it into high gear. I'm gonna, <laughs> she's going to come out <laughs> before the induction date because I, I just knew. I just knew they were, they were going to have a very hangry <laughs> patient. Like, it was not going to be pleasant. So, literally, I left that appointment and I went straight to Whole Foods. Remember I called you? I left that appointment and I immediately called Dion and I told him, I was like, babe, she said I was, was going to be able to eat once I checked in, whatever, whatever. So I immediately went straight to Whole Foods and I got, what did I get? A pineapple, I got castor oil, castor oil and castor oil. castor oil, pineapple, oh, and raspberry leaf tea. Because those are all things that like people that I'm close to that I know that they suggested. recommended and suggested and tried and they said it worked for them and then also I had also put a poll up on Instagram and um, they you know suggested that as well so I was determined to get her out so I came home I drank the castor oil it was disgusting but I, I made it through um, and then a little bit later I went no I ate the pineapple a full fresh pineapple I did that um, sorry on my eyes watering um, and then um, later in the day, I also drank the raspberry leaf tea. And then one other thing that I did is that after I ate the pineapple, about an hour later, my little sister came over and her and I went to, we have a mall nearby us and her and I walked the full, we walked the full mall twice. Cause I was like, okay, like I want to get her out, but it was too hot that day for us to walk outside. We did that that night <laughs> we had, I, I was when it was Braxton Hicks or like, Preterm or whatever it's called, like was false it? contractions, whatever it was. Because that night, yeah, because on oh, Monday, okay. yeah, cause on Monday night when we got in the bed, I had started to have like light contractions, yeah. and I remember we were in the bed, and I told Dion to go ahead and download the contraction count. What's it called? Like contraction count or something. Counting like app, whatever it's called. I started having some contractions, and I was like, "Ooh, okay, so like something I did during the day must have worked." So that was Monday night going to Tuesday morning. So Tuesday morning, they were still kind of coming here and there. Wait. Monday. Is that when you went for a sprint or something? You ran that night too? Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes, that is right. Okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm telling you, I was running. I was trying everything. So that was Monday night going into Tuesday morning. Um, I kind of still had them going into Tuesday morning. 
and then I have my doctor's appointment. So on Tuesday morning, I had a doctor's appointment. It was already scheduled, my regular weekly appointment for my doctor to check to see how far along um, I was dilated, check my cervix, all that good stuff. So when I went, she, I think at that appointment I was two. Yeah, you were only two centimeters. Yeah, at that appointment I was only two centimeters dilated, but it was progress because the weeks before I hadn't really dilated. At that point, I was like 90 to 100% effaced. I will say just a tip, if you are um, pregnant and you want to kind of like help aid your delivery, walk as much as possible. Because all of the walking that I did, you guys have seen my, my pregnancy journey, my um, pregnancy morning routine. I talked about it throughout other videos, but I walked pretty much four to five times a week for like three to four months, uh, the last three to four months of my pregnancy. And because of that, Olivia was so far down. She Essentially, did she did most of the work for me. Uh -huh. um, it was all because of how much walking I had did. So anyways, once the doctor's appointment, at that point, I was 90 to 100% effaced, but I was only two centimeters dilated. So we had made some progress, but not, not a whole lot. So after that appointment, I went to my sister's house and I kind of just repeated the same things I had did the day before. So I had drank a little more castor oil. Um, that time I mixed it in with orange juice because one of Dion's patients suggested that I mix it yeah. in with some orange juice. And it was, she did. it was much better. Um, so I drank some more castor oil. I drank some more tea. That um, Tuesday, I like bounced on the yoga ball at my sister's house. I went for a walk around. It sounds like a lot, y'all, but I, I spaced everything out. <laughs> it wasn't like everything back to back to back, but I, it was like over the duration of the whole day. I went for like a good like 30 minute walk around her neighborhood. I was with her because Dion was at work, but I wanted to obviously have someone with me in case I did go into labor. Oh, and then I tried something called curb walking. He thought I was so stupid. It sounds <laughs> But basically, it's like sound, I shouldn't say it's stupid, but it just basically, one of my friends recommended it. But it's like whenever you like walk on and off a curb, so like one foot is on, one foot is off the curb, and so like you're pretty much walking like this um, on the curb. But it kind of it's supposed to help, you know, move the baby, move the baby down. down. But we figured that much. It's um, like going over bumps. Yeah. So I did all of that, and then nothing. And oh, okay. So then no, I don't remember that. So then I came. So then I drove. Okay. So after all that, I didn't feel anything. I drove myself home and once I got home I immediately like dropped my stuff and I went for a walk around the neighborhood. Okay. This is my college. <laughs> so I went for a walk around the neighborhood. And I'm walking, I'm walking, and I probably walked for about like fifteen minutes and all of a sudden I call I immediately feel the worst pain in my stomach and I call Dion and I'm like, Baby, you have to come get me <laughs> So I'm on the other side of the neighborhood. Oh, it's right. a neighborhood. I call again. I'm like, babe, you have to come get me right now. I don't know if this is contractions or if I have to go poop really bad. Because <laughs> if you didn't know, castor oil, it's disgusting. And it's, it's supposed to have contractions, but it gives you the runs. Okay? Like, it gives you the complete run. It, it cleans you out. So, <laughs> so I call him and I'm like, and I'm like, babe, like... Um, like come get me right now. I there's no way I could finish this walk. Either I'm gonna have this baby on the street or I'm gonna start <laughs> pooping everywhere. Like there's no way. So he hops in the car, he comes and gets me from the other side of the neighborhood. I'm, I'm telling him to speed through the neighborhood so I can get to the house because I, I I knew I had to poop. And that was that. So I came home, I let myself I let everything go. Oh, she let it go. Uh, I let it go. <laughs> it was just the diarrhea. Um and then that was it. So, um, then after that, I'm off in the shower and everything, and I'm like, okay, let's try one more thing. Oh. And the one more thing was the thing, okay? Like, the act. We did the do. And I'm like, let's try one more thing. Let's go ahead and, you know, try to do the do one more time. Oh, okay, I did miss one other detail. Okay, so Tuesday morning at my doctor's appointment, when she checked from um, my cervix and, you know, to see how far along I was and things like that, one thing that she did do is she stripped my membranes. I think there's like a technical term for it. If you Google stripping membranes while pregnant, it'll explain exactly what that is. I think that that definitely played a part in it because, like I said, we had been trying to, you know, do things naturally, but nothing had ever happened whenever we had, like, had sex and did all the other things. So then Tuesday night, like I said, after my walk, after I cleaned myself out, I showered, all that good stuff. Right before dinner, I was like, okay, let's just try this one last thing. And then if it doesn't work, remember I told you, I was like, if, I was like, if it doesn't work, I will stop and I will just rest. I'll, I'll go to sleep. I'll just rest all day Wednesday. And then Wednesday, we were scheduled to check into 
the hospital to get induced. So we end up doing do literally an hour later. It wasn't even an hour. I don't think it was an hour. I don't think it was an hour after that contractions. So basically what happened was I was in the kitchen, I was eating dinner. Um, and I start I start to kind of feel my stomach tightening. And I was like, okay, this feels weird, but I but it wasn't like full on contractions yet. So I get in the bed, my hair is wrapped up and everything. I'm like, okay, you know, it's not gonna happen tonight. You know, we're gonna go ahead and just chill tonight, rest again, and we'll just get ready to get induced tomorrow. So I'm responding to emails, you know, everything's normal, and all of a sudden I'm like, boom. <laughs> I, I grab him. I'm like, babe, pull out the counter right now. <laughs> and so he starts tracking the contractions, and when I say they came on quick, they came on quick. Basically, I'm like trying to type re to respond to the emails in between the contractions. It's like they hurt so much. Like I have to like pause the email. I'm like grabbing his hand, and like once they stop, I'm like trying to type and finish it out, and then like that stop. So what would you say? It went from like at first they started I was like ten ish minutes apart, I'm like ten fifteen minutes apart. Mm, yeah, probably. 10 and to then, 12. yeah, yeah, like ten to twelve minutes apart. And but I would say like within like the span of like thirty minutes, it went from my contractions being 10 to 12 minutes apart to like what? Probably like within an hour. Oh, within an hour. Within an hour, they dropped to about two minutes and 30 yes. seconds. Yes. And fortunately, the app tells you, like based on your timing, the app will tell you when you need to go to the, the hospital. hospital. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Normally, yeah. you're supposed to head to the hospital when they're, when you get them down to what she said, five to seven minutes. Yeah. It was, so once you get yeah. to that point. You but I was really, I, I would say that I wanted to stay home as long as possible just because I knew that I would be most comfortable at home. And I don't want to get to the hospital for them to send me back home and all that kind of stuff. So I was like, I wanted to just wait until I was like, for sure, for sure, that this is like it. So, and like I said, it progressed so, so quickly. <laughs> so once it kind of hit like five minutes apart, Dion's like running around the house. He's like running around the house, grabbing the bags and stuff. But he's like, he's like in full on dad mode. Like, okay, let me go get this. Let me go get my bag. Da, 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 da. So he's, and I'm just sitting in the bathroom, like literally like this over the counter. <laughs> like, I, I could hardly breathe. It was, it was very, very intense. So fast forward, we um, get in the car. So this is probably okay. So timeline: my contractions probably started around like an eight thirty nine. We head to the uh, hospital around ten ten thirty. Yeah, ten ten thirty. We head to the hospital. No, around nine thirty ten because we make. Oh yeah, yes, yeah, so around, around ten. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Oh well, yeah, so we left the house around ten o'clock. The whole ride to the hospital it was a whole it was I don't even remember it. it just, I don't even remember the whole ride to the hospital. But I think it's because the whole time. I all I was focused on was breathing through my contractions. Like I was just like my eyes were closed the whole entire ride. I was just breathing through it because I had a friend who recently gave birth and she just and her number one piece of advice was like Kyra just breathe through the contractions, and that was all I was doing. So and how did I? Let me just say y'all how did I do with contractions? She did great with the contractions. And when I say I did not scream not one time, <laughs> I'm not. I'm telling you, I did not scream not uh, from the minute of the first contractions to the That's minute I delivered her. I did not scream, not once. So let me just say that. And mind you, I have a very low pain tolerance. Low. I have a very, very, very low pain tolerance. So, yeah. um. I was really surprised. Yeah, he I was, was really very surprised. surprised. I just knew I was gonna have a headache. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so fast forward, so we get to the hospital. Um, and then pretty much all of that is just like the routine stuff. So when I get there, oh, I remember when we got there and we got to the check-in, check-in counter, the first thing I said to the lady was, when can I get an epidural? <laughs> <laughs> and mind you, this is like the lady who's checking this in. She's not even a nurse or anything like that. But the first thing I you say, know when I can get the epidural. Yes, yeah, so the first thing I do when I get there is I'm like, I'm like, when can I get the epidural? Because it was at that at that point it was like excruciating. So we check in. They have taken to take me to the triage room where they like. Um, I check my cervix. They have like hooked me up to the monitor to see, you know, to just make just to kind of um, monitor um, Olivia's like heartbeat and her activity, all that kind of stuff. They have like checked my cervix. I like, you know, get them dressed, basically all that stuff. By the time we got to the hospital, I was four centimeters dilated. So, mind you, the morning I was two. By the time I got to the hospital, I was four. All of the check in stuff took about an hour. Then, after check in stuff, they took me to the delivery room where I actually delivered the baby. Mm -hmm. By the time I made it to the delivery room, I was eight. So within an hour, I had went from four centimeters to eight centimeters, eight centimeters dilated. So that's kind of how, that's you guys know how quick everything was going. 
got to the delivery room, got the epidural, well, got to the delivery room. It took a, it, they knew that I was really adamant about getting the epidural, so. Um, the epidural didn't take place till 1230. Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yes, about 12.30. That was about four hours I had dealt with the contractions naturally. So, um, but like I said, they, was, I, they knew from the minute I walked in there that I wanted epidural. So, whenever it was time, um, the anesthesiologist came in there and got me the, um, and entered the epidural. When I say within a minute of him entering the epidural, <laughs> I literally had so much relief within literally seconds like it was crazy i didn't expect it to work that fast but it worked fast so after that i was i was smooth chilling like after that i was like okay like i feel so much better but as soon as they put that epidural in there and the lady was like okay i'm gonna let you guys rest and blah blah i immediately said to her i was like she didn't feel like i have to poop remember that yeah so she's like hold on let me check you so she checks me i'm nine centimeters dilated so again th things are going really fast so I'm not too dilated. I'm 100% effaced. She can like she can feel and see her head and everything. So she's like, okay, just rest, and then I'll come back in about like she's like two an hour, hours. like two hours to see if you're um, right. at 10 centimeters. And I remember Dion saying two hours. I don't think it'll take that long. Remember he said that, and I agree with him. I was like, I don't, I don't think it's gonna take two hours for us to be ready to push. But she's like, okay, well, just let me know if you ever get like a really intense, like feeling that like you have to poop to like you can't hold it in anymore and you feel like you really 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 have to go to the bathroom and because if you feel that then this probably means that it's time for us to push so it was like okay so you probably slept for maybe an hour i thought you maybe slept for like maybe in we maybe slept. an hour I remember well I, it was like a full long sleep but i thought like you were resting Oh, we was right. Yeah, for like Trying maybe. Yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. But by then it was like two o'clock. Yes. Because I kept saying she's gonna come around two thirty. Yes. But when it started pushing yeah. To so like maybe around like two o'clock, and it was like so. About an hour later, I remember I called Dion. I said, "Babe, go get the nurse right now because I feel like like a big old piece of poop in my behind that literally needs to come out. That needs to come out. So he goes to go get her. She comes in. She checks me. Boom." 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters dilated, it's time for us to go. She's trying to get the doctor down there. She's trying to get me to do some practice pushes. So yeah. Then she saw a head. And yeah, then she saw a head and she's like, head. okay, I, we need to get her down here now. It, we, it's, it's go time, whatever, whatever. And so then from there, it was pretty much smooth pushing. Sailing. It was pretty much smooth sailing. So I pushed um, for like 45 minutes. They say that I pushed for 45 minutes. I do not think so. I, I still do not think, well, you know what? Because whenever you push, you push during a contraction. I think I pushed for maybe 30 minutes. Maybe. Okay, also quick pause right here. I have to actually go run a uh, errand. So as soon as I come back, we're gonna finish the story. Because the second part, the second half of the story is where it gets kinda juicy. Not juicy, but it the, does get loose. But the second half of the story is where it takes the turn. It takes a turn. Alright y'all, so we are back. Sorry, we had to handle mom and dad things. And we're gonna go ahead and finish the rest of the story. So I think that I left off right whenever i was pushing pretty much she had did most of the work for us because she for us she had did most of the work for me because she was already so far down the only thing is that whenever i was pushing her out um and i delivered her she had what's called shoulder dystocia so basically this is actually very common whenever i was pushing her out her shoulder got stuck under my pelvic bone which wasn't fun because they had to snip snip me to get her out but that was pretty much it like she, we had a, a very it, overall we had a very smooth labor and delivery she had to go to the NICU for the first 16 hours just to monitor her because of the shoulder dystocia and then also whenever she was born she had a little bit of a respiratory, uh, respiratory distress basically she has food in her lungs and you know that kind of type of thing whenever she came out she didn't come out crying so literally whenever she came out me and Dion's immediate focus like the doctors are still down there doing whatever they were doing but me and Dion's whole focus is on her and like what they were doing over there and I'm asking Dion like hey, what's going on like um but literally within like two, two three minutes she was like yeah, i mean like five minutes she was crying and she was healthy and everything so they did keep her in the NICU for the first 16 hours just to monitor her because of the shoulder dystocia and the distress and also because i had gd also they monitored her and they checked her blood sugar levels just to make sure that she was all good to go and that everything was um perfectly normal with her so overall that whole process was a pretty i want you to say it's a pretty smooth process yeah it was, cool. it was a pretty honestly like i i couldn't have imagined a better 
labor and delivery hospital experience. My favorite part of the whole delivery was like um, whenever I was like actually in the process of pushing her out, everyone in the room, because it was like the doctor and they had a couple nurses, they had a couple people in there. It's like four or five. Yeah, it's like four or five people in there. And like as I was pushing, like it's pretty much like I had like my own chilling squad and like yeah. they made me feel like superwoman. They're like, you got this, come on, come on, she's almost there. Like literally it was like I had my own cheering, cheering squad. That I'll never forget because it, it really did pump me up and they literally made me feel like I could do anything like in that moment. And that's pretty much a whole experience. We got discharged on Friday morning um, and then we were home Saturday, Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. Everything was normal. The only main thing, like I just had normal postpartum aches and pains. As the days went on, I started to feel more and more like myself. Like every day, the pain got a little bit less. The bleeding got, the bleeding got a little better. Because if you don't know, you, you're, you'll you be bleeding for weeks after you give birth. But bleeding got a little bit better. Like everything, it, it, it was like every day, I just got, I just started to feel and better. get better and better. By Tuesday... I kind of felt, I was about 80% to myself, like my normal, normal self. So I was feeling good. And it also was helpful because my parents came to help out. My sisters were here to kind of help out and all that kind of stuff. So that's Tuesday. Trigger warning real quick. Um, about to kind of talk about my postpartum situation. But I want to give a quick trigger warning because um, if you are someone who um, has had a, you know, a traumatic postpartum experience um, and you may get easily triggered by it then you may want to just bypass this point or if you are expecting and you don't want to hear about because I know for me like I don't want I personally didn't want to hear negative um, birth experiences so if you are expecting and you don't want to hear any type of like negative or traumatic um, birth or postpartum experience then you might want to just go ahead and bypass this and I, I encourage you to as well because you don't need this <laughs> unless you just want to be informed and kind of know what to look out for but um and hopefully I can get through this without, without crying because I feel like I have whenever I talk through all the details I feel like I, I get emotional so okay so like I said Tuesday I was pretty much like back to myself so Wednesday morning everything's normal I had just placed a grocery delivery that morning Wednesday morning well, the grocery delivery had just came yeah like literally the grocery delivery had just came um Dion had put the groceries up like everything was going normal yeah so after we watched a tv show I remember I so I walked downstairs and I said okay I, I have to go to the bathroom so I go in the bathroom and uh, FYI you guys this may be a little too much information but I want to give details so that we can get kind of get the full picture so I go into the bathroom, I do my thing, and I am, I'm like finishing using the bathroom, and I feel like, at, it, it feels like urine is like still dripping down, but I had, but I, I wasn't peeing anymore, if that makes sense. And so I look down, you know, I look into the toilet, and I just see like blood is like running from my vaginal area. And it was, and I knew, I immediately knew something was wrong. Because mind you, as we have been saying, like every day I had been getting progressively better. And so like my bleeding wasn't, like I wasn't bleeding like that. And so like I said, I was, I was peeing and then like I stopped peeing, but I still felt something. I was like, what is that? I looked down and it was just blood. And it was, I was just, I was, it was just blood just like dripping, dripping out. And then I kind of look and I see that like something is like. It wasn't dripping, it was flowing. Yeah, okay, there you go. So, yes. It wasn't, it wasn't like just dripping, like little droplets. It was like, like, a, like an actual stream of blood. of blood that was like flowing out of my vaginal area. So, like I said, immediately then I knew something was wrong. So, obviously, Dion is the, <laughs> the doctor in the house. So, I immediately call him in. And he's not grossed out by this kind of stuff. Someone who's watching this may be, but he's not grossed out by that kind of stuff. So, I immediately call him in there and I'm like, babe. So he rushes in and he's like, what? And I'm like, I'm bleeding. So I had him like take a look. And then he had noticed that like something, something was like hanging. It was like, it was weird. So then I reached in. Well, I put on some gloves. Cause I was, yeah. Oh, first no. I was about to reach in and I was like, Ugh. Yes. As soon as Dion got in there and he saw it, I immediately called my doctor. Remember, I called my doctor's office because, as I said, I knew something was wrong. So I'm on the phone with my with my doctor's office, trying to get a hold of my doctor, 
Dion's going to get his glove so you can pull out whatever it is because they recommended that we just go ahead and pull it out to see what, like, what it could like, be. Like, we could tell. Right. <laughs> um, so he goes, I get him on the phone, he goes to get his gloves, whatever, he comes back and he, like, reaches up there. Again, sorry, I seem to be TMI, but this is, like, how, how it played out. He goes up there and he pulls out whatever it is. We never really, like, looked that hard at, and, the, and we felt. say now that... If there was one thing, if there was one thing that we could have did differently, bagging and bringing with us. yes, we wish that we would have bagged that little piece of, so anyone watching this, if that happens, if this, if, God forbid this does happens to you, but in the case that something like this does happen to you, if you find something like that, bag it up and bring it with you to the doctor. That's the one thing, looking at hindsight, that we wish we would have did, is we wish, we wish that we would have bought the little piece, whatever it was, and bought it with us. But um, Dion came. He pulled it out. We didn't really look. I just I didn't, I didn't look at it. Is yeah, I mean, it, was, it was it was covered in blood. Was so like, you can tell it was tissue, but it was like a firm, dense tissue. Yeah, I think it was placenta. Yeah, we think now that it may have been like a piece of placenta or something, but it looked just like the same. Um, material yeah, but we never. Out. Yeah, exactly. And we During this right. Delivery. Um, and but we again. In hindsight, we wish we would have did that, but we didn't. So Dion pulled it out, whatever. I think he just dropped it in the toilet. Yeah, I just dropped yeah, it dropped in the toilet. toilet. <laughs> he kind of just felt, he just felt, felt it, it just to kind of see what it. To see what it felt like. Yeah. yeah. When I initially when I pulled it out, the blood kind of started slowing because I was like, "Oh, it's slowing," and then I literally like probably fifteen seconds later, she was like, "No, it's not. If anything, it picked up." So then, kind of like picked up. Then at this point, we're on the phone with the doctor. Well, the nurse. On the phone with the uh, doctor's office, one of the nurses, and she's just like, don't panic. It's probably just uh, a postpartum, what she said, discharge or uh, something or whatever. And so then at this point, I'm getting frustrated because I'm just like, lady, I, in my head, I'm thinking like, lady, this ain't no damn Yeah, we, discharge. yeah, we I knew, know what that like. we, we knew, saw that we knew the first, the last couple days, so. This isn't it. Yeah. So then I took the phone. I'm just like, hey, I don't think that's it. The blood, st the bloodstream is continuous. It's picking up. Yeah. And okay. She's just like, we'll pause. Okay. How we knew it was bad because okay. So right after right after Dion had pulled the piece out and we looked in it, it, it was so increasing. We like tried to put a pad. The pad got soaked in like seconds. Yeah. So we put one pad. It got soaked. We put another Trash. pad there. So. It got soaked. And we knew at that point it was. Some, yeah, that something was not right. To the third pad within less than a minute. It was like, it was okay. like yes. <laughs> so, yeah. So, at this point, we're still on the phone. I like, I'm not listening to them no more. We get on the, uh, get her. I said, hey, we got to get up off the toilet. Let's get on the floor. Let's see if we can stop the blood, the bleeding or whatever. So, we put our legs up. We use some towels, more pads. At this point, it's not working. This is two minutes later. At this point, the lady on the phone at my doctor's office, she's telling us that we should come in. Remember? So she's telling us that we should come into the um that we should come into the hospital. So originally we're like, okay, okay, we're gonna get in the car and go. But I so I start walking out of the bathroom. I didn't even make it a couple steps until I told Dion, like, I'm like, babe, like there's no way that you can drive. Like there's no way that we will make it to the hospital because it's just blood is literally just coming. It's, I mean, like at this point, it's just like, like flowing out. And I were yelling like, it's so much, it's so much blood. It's so much, it's so much coming out. At this point, I had like three pads stacked right there with like some towels. Everything was just soaked. I had a panic attack. Like I was crying because I knew, I just knew that I was losing too much blood at that point. And then I know that I was, okay. I know that he was scared at the same time. Because, like, we also had live upstairs. Like, it was just the three of us at the house. <laughs> at that point, I'm scared. I know that he's scared. We had a baby at the house. And it was just, like, it was just, it was, it was very, very, very scary. You can put it in the interest part of it. Sorry, I got to get myself together. I think after two minutes, I think it was probably less than two minutes, but it felt like eternity. Mm -hmm. After about two minutes or less, I was just like, okay. No, we have to call the ambulance. We have to call the ambulance. So, at this point, I called the ambulance and... Um, 
on the phone with the ambulance and she's just like, you're talking too fast. And so I'm on the phone with the uh, 911. I'm just like, hey, I need ambulance right away. <laughs> just like, okay, what's wrong? I'm like, my wife is on the floor bleeding. She's bleeding. Just, we can't stop the bleeding. <laughs> and then she's like, slow down. Yeah, because remember at this point, I'm I'm laying, like, so, so I'm like laying on the floor on my back with like my legs up to like yeah. try to prevent it. But at this point, there's Nothing there's so much there's so much blood there's just blood everywhere like literally like I'm pretty much laying in a pool of my own blood at that point. So at this point, the ambulance arrives in like less than five minutes. Yes, th I thank God. I they thank like, God that we live in the suburbs out right here, <laughs> and that it's not a whole whole lot of activity. <laughs> Because they, I mean, literally, I would say, like, literally within five minutes of Dion calling. calling them, I feel like they arrived. And it, I mean, when I say, for y'all, God is so real. Because literally, the, the way every, when I, when I look back on it, the way everything had lined up, it was, it, there is no, it was nothing but God. Because Dion caught the ambulance, the ambulance came quick. A, if we hadn't taken the ambulance, or if they hadn't come as quick as they did, I probably there's a good chance I mean I have been here I was bleeding out so fast and I was losing so much blood that like had they not come and pumped me with the fluids that they did I, I there's a good chance I wouldn't have been here also my sister just so happened to be off that day and like right up the street so that I mean literally so she was able to come and take over with Liv and Dion was able to come with me to the hospital Dion almost went to work out. You, yeah, Dion, I was supposed to go Dion was supposed to go work out. If Dion wasn't here when this whole thing happened, I don't know what would have happened. Ambulance came um, again, like within five minutes of Dion calling them, and then they immediately came to check my my blood pressure, all of that. When they first came, things were looked kind of stable. But then maybe within like a minute or two later, they were checking. They couldn't find a pulse. And also, I remember two or three minutes after they arrived, I remember I started like getting like a headache and I, and I started to feel Spent. real, real, real lightheaded to where I was fainting. So they immediately came, uh, immediately um, gave me an IV full of fluids. Once they gave me the fluids, my blood pressure got back up into normal range, thank God. And then they were able, like, they were able to move me. I rode to the ER for myself. Dion was still here with live until Raina got here. Mm. Raina didn't she Raina got here like a couple minutes after after I left, mm. I feel yeah, like. Yeah, like fifteen minutes ahead. Yeah. Once Raina came and got Liv, Dion rushed over to the to the ER. That's where I went. I went to the ER or the hospital that I ended up delivering at. And so once I got to the ER, they rehooked me up to the IV. I remember again in the ER at some point, like right when I got there, I had started feeling like the blurred vision, lightheadedness type situation. Either trying to give me medication, they like try to like in i'm not gonna say they they tried a bunch of different things try to get the blood to stop nothing was working my OBGYN was had arrived at that point i remember getting rolled out of the room that i was in and rolled down to the to the or and everything else was a blur because i was under anesthesia and all i know is that they did it's called a dnc you can google i guess she you can google what it is she just cleaned out the uterus for any like supplemental material that was left that may have been left over or like any or yeah, yeah to tissue anything like anything that anything like that um and oh and then she inserted it's called a balloon a she balloon. inflated a balloon to to help apply pressure to the uterus to stop the bleeding to stop the bleeding which right it helped yes well it, it helped, helped as long as the balloon was in there. It's so in the balloon in there. Balloon, it can only stay in for twenty four hours. Yes. After all of this, I just come to and I'm in the ICU. Like Dion said, whenever she put the balloon in there, it did initially work. Mm -hmm. But like he said, the balloon can only stay in there for twenty four hours. And the hope was that by applying the pressure to the uterus, breathing would slow down, and then that within twenty four hours, whenever she comes to get out, the bleeding would have stopped. Fast forward to Thursday morning. My doctor comes in to, you know, def deflate the balloon. She deflated it, and it was just gushing. The blood was just... The Red River. Yeah, the blood started gushing again. And I remember just feeling so defeated. I remember being like, dang. Mind you that during all this time, they are pumping me nonstop with fluids. They pumped me with so much blood. They plumped me, they plumped me, they pumped me with platelets medications like they pump me with like so much stuff so at this point my face is swollen everything is swollen. everything is swollen my right. hands are swollen my face 
my legs and feet are swollen everything is just swollen that didn't work yeah they had just had to reprep her to go yes. back into the OR to do another I'm already so mad insert a balloon but this time they were doing something called an IR if I remember correctly basically what they did is they used like an ultrasound machine and like these really tiny devices and they like went in like right here and they pretty much like put like a temporary gel foam in the arteries that supply the uterus to essentially get the uterus to clot to clamp and clot down on its own with you know without the that extra blood supply and so they did that 24 hours yeah again i was hours. i was out when i came to it was after the procedure and they kind of had to wait we had to, just, had to sit there and wait hours. for 24 hours if that specific procedure didn't work the next and last resort was a hysterectomy which is basically where they remove your uterus and I remember when she told me that I remember I bust out crying. Dion was on the room. I bust out crying. It sucked because in the ICU, Dion could not stay the night. Um, that was probably like the, the, the second worst, aside from the pain and just the overall experience of being in the ICU and being away from her. The second worst part was that he couldn't he couldn't stay the night. So half the day I was by myself. Could not. I couldn't sleep. I just kept crying. I, I remember the nurses came in there like one time. I was sitting there crying, and like, and like the nurse was like, "Here comes a box." Of, she like she just came like a box of tissues because like, I just couldn't stop crying this this one night when Dion wasn't there. Anyways, it was just it was just not a pleasant experience like at all. That was Thursday going into Friday and I just remember I kept praying like Lord just please let this procedure work because I did not want to have to A do the hysterectomy and I didn't want to have to spend another night in the NICU. We I mean, not the NICU, the ICU. At this point we are twenty four hours has passed, right? Yeah. From the second comes procedure. Back, yeah. My doctor, who I love, she's amazing. My OBGYN comes in and so she's like, okay, Kyra, let's just see if this works. So basically what she did is she deflated the balloon halfway just to see like if anything would come out. We were good. Like nothing, like nothing had, had come out. Halfway. Um, half, yeah, 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 at the halfway point. So she's like, okay, I'll come back and I'll deflate it all the way and I'll actually remove it and then we'll see what we're working with. So she comes back out two hours later, deflates it, she looks good takes it out and so fortunately thank god that whenever she deflated the balloon and took it out that like there was like any excessive bleeding going on i was just so weak my stomach my i had no core strength at all my legs i couldn't probably move them because i hadn't moved around in three days so after she was um deflated the balloon i was able to like actually get up out the bed with like to help like three people that felt good just like simple things like that felt so good and also one of the other major things was to check was my hemoglobin count like that was also another main thing that they kept checking was my hemoglobin count just to see you know how how the blood was reproducing my body and you know um, making sure that it was producing enough so they were able to move me that night to the just a regular med surge floor um, where Dion was able to spend the night and then like that night essentially you know just monitoring so they would check my pad just make sure that I wasn't like bleeding excessively and around I got discharged Saturday around like 12 1 o'clock and I was able to come home so it was a very long very traumatic three three days in the ICU and then the one day on the in the on the med surge floor they've seen like postpartum you know hemorrhages and things like that the but what was so shocking about mine was the fact that it was so delayed okay. it was because ex it was exactly a week from when i had given birth and that's not common we haven't gotten like the official diagnosis they're still waiting um, on results. on the results from the materials that they that they were the retrieved from the dnc and they cleaned up the uterus mm -hmm. but what they think happened is that i actually had a uterine aneurysm I, honestly i think that I think that it was like that aneurysm was probably just sitting on the edge waiting for you to do something yeah. with some pressure. So when you went to the bathroom, just yeah. a normal st stool yeah. caused, provided enough pressure for it to burst. Yeah. Which, Which is scary. Could be, it could happen to anyone, but it just happened to happen to us. Yeah. It was, let's just say it was very scary. Um, I have to give a huge shout to this one mm -hmm. because he, y'all, he held it down. Okay. Like, I mean... He fed me. He fed me soup. He tried to 
he tried to brush my teeth, but I ended up taking the brush toothbrush from him because he wasn't brushing my teeth right. But he, after the first procedure on the first day, my hair had got messed up. So he came in, he like from, he bought all my hair stuff from home and he like wrapped my hair that first night to make sure my hair was still late and I got out the hospital. <laughs> But Dion's a natural caretaker. Like, that's just, like, who he is naturally. So he had he really held it down. And then also, I was very fortunate and blessed to have my family. The minute that I got driven off by the ambulance, I didn't really have to worry about anything in terms of with Olivia because I knew that they had it handled. I give a huge shout-out to God. Yes. Because I'm telling you, if uh, I think things could have went a whole lot differently if I wasn't a praying man. So shout out to God for that. Thanks, thanks, Big G. Anyways, not Big G. <laughs> yeah, we've been we've been good, and we're claiming that I'm good. She is claiming good. that I'm healthy and that it all is all is all is healed and and fixed in Jesus' name. You know, to be honest, I don't think that I've still fully processed everything that went down, only because it was it was a lot. It was, it was so. Rude. Yeah, it was just, it was a lot, and I feel like I still have some processing to do. But the fact that I got through this and only cried twice <laughs> is is a is a plus. Yeah, that's pretty much it. A recap of our labor, delivery, and postpartum journey. So me good. It's the holiday season right now, so you know, I'm feeling very joyful. <laughs> Heels and valleys, bro. Heels right. and valleys. Yeah. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye y'all.